Six years ago, I made a video on my YouTube channel, this one, uh, why I can't record so much. In the video I explained that since I got a new computer set up and had a bunch of school stuff or whatever, you know, life caught up to me. I, I couldn't be able to record as frequently as I did. I couldn't, couldn't record weekly videos anymore. And I posted a video to sort of explain my, my absence I had from time to time from YouTube. Uh, but I also explained that I, I would get back. Didn't know when, didn't know where, but I would get back sooner or later. And then I vanished for six years, and now I'm sort of back. I'm not sure for how long, uh, but I am back. Now, I know what you guys are thinking, it's something along the lines of, oh, That guy. Oh, look at him. Oh, the years did not treat him well. Mm -mm -mm. What's he doing back? Well, it's a long story, really. I, I could explain it to you, but, uh... Do you know, I could I could use words, or I could make a little documentary. Uh, so that's what I did. Me and my friend, we made a documentary based on totally true events as they happen in real life. Live. Feels good to be back. Check it out. Blamo. Noel's absence from YouTube has been going on for far too long, and I'm here to help him out. Let's get it on. You won't believe it! What? Oh, the, the, what's going Netflix on? Netflix contacted us. They wanted to make a full-length movie out of Margarita. No way. I'm, no I'm way. serious. I'm fully serious. No way. Wait, wait. wait. How, how, where, where, why did they contact you? I don't know. I forwarded the, the thing to you. Just check your mail. Come on, it, dude. Man, I'm not ready for this. I'm not ready. I can't do it. I can't do it. Not now. Okay, come on. Listen to me. I have two games out right now, and you can make videos of it, and you can, you can make tons of money and get lo loads of views. Come on. I know, but I I'm not ready. I can't do it, man. Come on. Just... If you do this, lunch is on me when you're done, all right? Fine. Okay, I'll do it. I'll do it. Hey guys, it's me, Noel, the Soda Gamer, and I'm going to play for you guys Margareta, a game of which I co-created with my, my dear friend Jordan. Yeah, that is me talking. Yeah, this is really strange. I haven't made a video in six years. We made this game together, I helped them a little bit on another game, and, and we just thought, you know what? If I'm ever doing a small comeback, it might as well be with my own game, you know? So here I am, uh, basically. Let's just get to it. My microphone might sound a bit funky. I had... Shut up. Let's just get into the game. You know what? It's a great game. You might have heard of it, you know. Oh, I made that logo. It's, it's, it is a bit, a bit strange. That, that's my friend Jordan, uh, who developed the game. We sort of co-wrote it. Uh, I helped, to, you know, I did a lot of stories, so voice acting. My microphone might sound a bit funky, I had some problems with it. Uh, I fixed it to the best of my abilities. I think it is acceptable, but not perfect, perhaps. <laughs> so that's me, that's me. I'll talk a little bit more about the game as we get into it. Sex position. <laughs> it's weird. This game came out a few months ago. I, I haven't. I used to play it a, a shit ton. That's me. Uh, where? Where am I? Where? Where am I? <laughs> I do cringe. You know, it, it is also always a little cringe. I think when you hear your own voice, no matter where it is. Um, and also, I hope the sound is not too overwhelming. I tried to find a nice balance. I, I think it's nice enough. I hope. Uh, otherwise, again, I apologize. So yeah, I played the crap out of this game when it first came out. 
uh, or before it came out because me and Jordan we were play testing it like every chance we get, got we played through it like four times in a row like for a week straight so I played this game probably like 20 to 30 times to f look for bugs and stuff uh, it is a bit strange to be back ah my mouse is wonky okay there we go <laughs> yeah it's a bit of a walkthrough I guess I, I I wanted to take more of like a behind the scenes opportunity talk a bit about the game as we worked on it we'll also make an episode of our podcast the the Nordy boy podcast I'll probably leave a link in the description or something but uh, so you can check that out if you'd rather listen to my voice than actually look at my face which is 100% understandable you know I, I get that but yeah, I don't know where to start. This this whole game, being locked in this sex dungeon of a of a creep that is based on me, both name and appearance. Where did it spawn? Well, I when I play games, uh, what I I play games. This where I am right now, my little sort of home office where I draw and have school and play games and do everything that one might wish to do if they are me uh, I do it down here it's in a basement and I guess that's sort of where the idea spawned every time me and Jordan hang out at my place we what is this place what is this place we hang out in this sort of basement well we always go to a, down to the basement and even though it's a quite it's sort of modern basement except for the water damage it, it always sounds a little creepy <laughs> oh my God. I haven't played this game in forever it's it's really strange to be back Oh, yeah, oh man, it's nostalgic, uh, uh, this game was released like, I don't know, like, just a few months ago. Greetings, traveler. My name is David, David Jazz. Jazz. Okay. If you can hear this, then you are currently in our sex chamber. Welcome. Don't freak out. This pre-recorded message was made to help you survive this. I have scattered tapes all around this dungeon that will help you escape this abnormal this large this sex is, chamber. This is George. Grab the key and find the door. To I the love. Next I love this character. Best of luck, traveler. Hehehe. <laughs> <laughs> almost has that cheeky little laugh. David, Jazz, huh? Yeah. That, that's sort of where the idea spawned. We just joked around about how creepy it is to go always hang out in my basement whenever we do stuff how it sounded really like disturbing in a way and it sort of went from that to uh, I, 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 I don't know we, we, Jordan made a, a, like a, this 3d model of me in in this program this was way back when many years ago and he tried to make a game where we're, you're just supposed to like escape my my house and I was chasing you, and then we sort of evolved that idea. We, we picked it up a few years later when you found that 3D model, and it was like, let's make a full-length game, and I was totally up for that. I immediately, or we together, immediately started uh, exploring the sort of story and why it's a sex chamber. I think it was just Jordan improvising in the opening dialogue, because originally it was just supposed to be like a chamber or a basement, but... I guess I don't mind sex is a similar mother. Kids, keep that in mind. Listen to your parents. Use uh, protection. You know, like at least a helmet, guys. Greetings, traveler. It is me again, David Jazz. Jazz. <laughs> no sex chamber may look like an ordinary abnormally large sex chamber. Yep. But no, it looks it's like an ordinary abnormally exploded. large sex chamber. So be cautious when looking around. Make sure to look under every nook and cranny. And keep an eye out for notes left from previous victims. There should be more tapes further out in the chambers. Good luck, traveler. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that cheeky laugh? You know what? I'm gonna decrease the volume just a little bit because I'm worried that it's too distracting. There we go. Okay. It's a little quieter. Uh, yeah, so you can inspect things. This was something I really wanted. Uh, you know, I played a lot of... When we were making this, I played a lot of... Uh, to Resident Evil Village and I liked inspecting stuff and me and Jordan sort of agreed that yeah of course you're gonna do that in this game even though it doesn't really serve any function 
Uh, an old mug that reeks of tea. Originally it was coffee, but I do not drink coffee. So I just told him, no, Jordan. Change it to tea, you bastard. How dare you take me for an average simp. So yeah, uh, <laughs> I guess I'll just throw up more random fact as we go along. Now let's see here. We go, go, I love the fire in this game. It uh, it came out so great. And that that's all, Jordan. You know the, the oh, those oh, those little part. This is me though. I wrote all of Ted's notes. I don't know how interesting they are, but we wanted to find some disturbing like notes and facts and whatevers. And all of Ted's notes I I wrote and sent to Jordan via Discord, and he has sort of copy pasted them into the uh, game. Hi. My name is Ted. Ted Williams. If you're reading this, you're probably in the same situation as me. Or a cop. Or that freak I hear screaming in the tunnels. I'm writing these notes for three reasons. If you, like me, have found yourself trapped in here, I want to share my story with you and hope that it can somehow assist you. If you are law enforcement, I hope this gave you insight in this case and uh, you know everything I've had to go through and hopefully... Blah, 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 blah. Ah, here we go. I woke up less than an hour ago. The last thing I remember is that I was drinking with some friends last night. My head still feels like it's about to pass through my skull. At first, I thought this was just another prank from my friends. They're like that. Assholes. Uh, I thought they really just outdone themselves, getting access to some underground tunnel, hiring, hiring some guy to leave messages on a radio. But the longer the tunnels appeared and the higher I screamed, I started to realize this is not a prank. This is real and I have no idea how to get out. Then I heard it. A voice unlike any human voice I've ever heard before. He's shouting things in the tunnel. I have no idea what he's saying. Sounds like a European language of some kind. But it does not sound friendly. I'll keep to, uh, I'll try to keep whoever you are updated later on this. Please be careful, Ted. Alright, and all the little scroll rotate things. I, I made those too. Well, I think Jordan made the E. That's just a little small detail. Uh, but fun fact, nonetheless, I think. It's, it's fun, you know, when there's two guys making stuff. You know, Jordan made such a great job on everything. I want to get my, my small credits visually like that I'm allowed to because it was... I mean, I mostly just wrote the dialogue and uh, wrote this, did have developed the story and like voice acted. I did do some visuals what later. What the hell are those cells used for? I also hate that uh, this was before before I got this uh, microphone. Uh, unfortunately, so I used like an old USB microphone, and the problem was that it was difficult to sort of scream and stuff without it getting airy. Obviously, also my voice will change throughout the game just because some things I recorded earlier, then I had more like my natural voice. And then I started doing this more. Uh, no, I've been smoking for 97 years. Type of voice, just because I thought it was getting colder and like more injured and stuff. But sometimes it might be inconsistent because I recorded them in a weird order. Uh, but yeah, where where was I? Yeah, right. European language had talked about. Yeah, <laughs> I've forgotten about that. Uh, me and Jordan were were, uh, you know. Swedish citizens speak Swedish uh, So yeah, my sort of bad guy character Noel he um, Tends to speak Swedish sometimes just because we thought it was funny that someone would just scream like really nonsense sentences Now comes our favorite part we both agreed on this very early on like before we had even like made <laughs> the first 10 minutes of the game you know what? Games are so unrealistic. <laughs> because you can walk around in this like chamber or forest or whatever for like tens of tens of hours, if not like hundreds of hours. And you never have to take a shit. And we had <laughs> thought that was really unrealistic, so well. Added. Just like that. Our game, our rules. We ain't taking no shit from nobody. It was like a triple negative, you decipher that. Got a little map, 1984. It's unclear if that's when the game takes place. I think it's sort of like a, it's a timeless masterpiece if I do say so myself. 
So uh, this was supposed to be like a little underground place when Noel was visiting his prisoners late at night. He could just go here and sleep and, you know, do whatever he wants to. I also, this one I wrote as well. This shoe is where Linoff smells like an armpit. It's probably a reminder, perhaps from the first one that got trapped in these tunnels. It wasn't a child. I have a feeling it doesn't belong to a child. That's just one of those moments of me typing something uh, forgetting what I typed because I stopped to talk to Jordan about something, an idea uh, that I had or was answering a question he had or whatever. Uh, and then I sort of reset without reading what I had previously said, but it sort of works out, I guess. <laughs> There's a man with really small feet. Yeah. So, this was also... Uh, me and Jordan at this point played a lot of Dead by Daylight, so we got stole their little thing, made it simpler. With a lot of glitches associated with that barrel. If you watch some of the really early gameplay videos other people have done on YouTube, you might find some from like the first day or two where that lock picking sound went on and on forever and ever and it was a pain in the ass to fix. But we did eventually fix it. Which is great. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I also came up with Bobby Bucky. He likes warm baths, long uh, walks at the beach, and oatmeal. He's said to bring good fortune to have her boobs his adorable beak snoot. Like, I gave him a little Tinder profile. We just wanted some more rooms to explore for the hell of fun of it, you know? I mean, this game is all based on inside jokes. That was sort of the thing. All we did was take where jokes only me and him would understand, squeeze them in, and hope other people would just find it so bizarre that they also found it funny. Uh, I have we have another game where well Jordan pri uh, has another game I helped him a little with that I'll also make a video on that's a little more for everyone to understand. This one is just nonsense shoved into a horror game. Greetings, traveler. Looks like you made it. Now there should be an exit that you can crawl out of right behind that statue. Oh my god. A lot of people got guarded by that jump scare, my guys and girls. How? How the hell did I get here? How the hell did I get here? I gotta be honest though, it sounds pretty, pretty good for being recorded on a, like a USB mic. I'm like, to be fair. Got another, oh no. I. I just I just remember which part this is. Hi again, it's Ted. Ted Williams. I've seen him now. That man, that thing. I have no idea what the hell his deal is, but he doesn't seem too too keen on me leaving. I managed to get around him, and I don't think he knows where I am, but I can still hear him in the distance. Jager Hema. What does that phrase even mean? <laughs> yeah, so it's Swedish. It's spelled wrong. Like I tried to mimic an American or English person trying to spell a Swedish word. It just means I'm home. Well, I can still hear him in the distance. No, wait. Uh, what does that phrase even mean? I don't know if it will help, but I had to get through some sort of studio to get here. A bunch of easels and paints everywhere and drawings of grown men in weird dreamish sequences. Does this freak see himself as some sort of artist? Anyways, I've also discovered that he's a lot easier to trick and get around when he's distracted or provoked. I really hope this helps you and best of luck to both of us. If I make it, I'll make sure to leave more notes. Thank God he didn't take my notebook when he trapped me here. In case I don't make it, here's a little fact that might help you identify me. My name is Theodore Williams. I was born the 29th of February 2000 in Seattle, Washington. I'm a journalist student currently residing in LA. Uh, and a part-time work at, our, at a local cafe. My parents' names are Benjamin and Natalie Williams. God, I hope this information will not be necessary. So yeah, poor guy. What does that make him? It makes him like five years old. 29th of February, technically, I guess. <laughs> you know. That's it, Jogger Herba. 
Y'all got him. It was just a fun little voice me and Jordan used to make when we were kids to tell jokes. We always told jokes about little kids being like in these horrible situations. His name was Little Richard. And he had that voice. Oh, I had this. I I don't. I'm not. I'm not a, quite a fan of this part of the game. Just because this is the only part that's unpredictable. Because he is walking around in this this labyrinth like a freaking minotaur, and it's AI based, so you can't really predict where he's walking. When he sees you, he'll follow you, and you'll have to hide on beds and stuff. I seem to have made it pretty good though. Which is just pure luck. So yeah, you you, you follow the lights. Uh, if that's a little trick for you. And here we have this beautiful drawing <laughs> that based the whole sort of game. We used to have some Australian friends, I, uh, and I used to tell them that Swedes are actually aliens. We come from this big space ball named Margareta, which is a Swedish name. And we made this picture of us coming home. So it's us with baby bodies. We drew it in drop on me and Jordan together. It's me and Jordan and a little Bob Ross. And I guess enough said. But yeah, you're supposed to burn the drawing to provoke him. I don't know how we like that fire. I apologize for that. That was really loud for me. How lovely is this life? Not in my house. Not in my chambers. Slow down, you hot kiss ass. You can't run forever. I'm trying to be nice, but you left it all choice. You could have given that anything good. Yeah, I'm done. Maybe. Yeah, it's like... Speakers are Swedish. You can't even stop on me. So basically what he's saying at the end is, I'm gonna burn you, you freaking cucumber. And then he just says things like, Come on, open up, open up. You can't, you can't run forever. You can't stop me. It's the last thing he says. So yeah, uh, that's a little tip for you, but uh, you know, just follow the lights, uh, and that's gonna help you in most situations. Rusty handcuffs, cause I'm a kinky boy. I'm a dirty little, I'm a dirty little pig boy. Someone has been here before. And here we have Bubba D Bucky again. Yeah. This is a great, this, I love this part. I can't quite remember, I remember. Oh shit, no way I'm going through this. I think. I can't remember whose idea the fire was. I, I, I remember that the whole dried leaves part, I think was my idea, but I think Jordan's idea to have an obstacle there, but the fire in general, I think it might I, the torch and the dry leaves. I can't remember who came up with who. I'm just I'm just gonna take a, a quick crap. Thank you very much. So yeah, we can now run. We can now sprint because we've needed that. Oh. Let's go. Let's freaking go. <laughs> Whee! That was... You have no idea how... hurt... my throat was. Hold up. Flashlight's broken. Yeah, so I can't use my flashlight anymore. Oh convenient uh no but basically how we did the all the voice acting i mean it's it's me right it's it's basically just me let's see if rock climbing class is paid off sitting in front of my microphone my Jor uh my jordan jordan told me things he told me a scenario you know that that he wa wanted a voice line for so he said you know okay you're gonna climb on top of, of a bunch of boats you know you gotta do that part now uh, because that's the part I'm working on right now, so... And the, I basically, he gave me a scenario, I sat down for like five minutes at least in front of my microphone 
and I just did a, I just said a bunch of stuff, you know, like, let's see if rock climbing classes paid off. Uh, just like mama used to make him. Okay, I can do this. Easy peasy level squeezy. I just said a bunch of like stuff like that, and then he just picked out his favorites and put them in different scenarios. And then he gave me a new scenario. So, so, some, some things I say in this game are things that I was supposed to say at another place. But we found something that sounded better for that place and just had a voice line over and it just happened to fit pretty good in the future at some point. Greetings, traveler. It is I again, David Jass. And oh my, it seems like you've got yourself to a little bit of a pickle. It's... But don't worry, traveler. I will help you out. You see the waterfall over there? Yeah. What I want you to do is to swim right up. The waterfall is actually handmade, and it's supposed to work like a hidden elevator, and it'll suck you right up. <laughs> Anyways, continue on and listen to my words. Good luck, traveler. I believe in you. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, uh, so yeah, I mean, he gave me a scenario. I voice acted that scenario, just said a bunch of, like, nonsense. It was a little more script what was it though? I don't know. And then I used, did the same things for, for the bad guy, Noel, I guess. But that that part in particular that when I weed down the, the, the thing in the wheelbarrow. That was pain because it was just me for like five minutes doing a high pitched voice, voice cracking half the times, and then I and then me for another like minute and a half just doing <coughs> <coughs> <laughs> punching my own chest trying to get myself to sound like even more out of breath it was it was a painstaking process but i think it turned out pretty good he did he did say that we would be sucked right up uh, that's on me Hell of a breath holder, ain't I? I do think I had a voice line when I popped out here that I recorded, but we didn't add it. But I think it was just like a <sighs> I'm cold or something like that. Uh, this is Ted, Ted Williams. I'm running out of ink. I keep it three. So apparently, puzzles are a thing now. I don't know if the freak, uh, if it's the freak or that radio man that arranged it, but there's some kind of code lock here. I had to swim through some water to get her. I hope it's a sun or something. Pros, uh, I found uh, pros, uh, pros is that I found an old Polaroid camera next to a TV I found nearby. So there's future messages may have some visual assistance. I also think I've found the freak's motivation to this. Apparently it's far. And then the ink fades out. Leaving you on a little bit of a cliffhanger. Ah, uh, yeah, as you can see, I've done it. Like, the, the, the pink line randomly appears, but I've done it so much. This uh, runs down smooth. This is... I, I, this was a thing Jordan did for me, which I really appreciate. Because I... Whenever we play games together, though, whenever I play games in general, I love using s these, like, Sippo gas lighters. I don't know why. It just... It, f it feels so cool. I don't even smoke or anything, but it just feel so badass I mean the design of them they're beautiful you know they're just beautiful I stop to make grown man cry but yeah so now the light goes around you instead of in front of you like the flashlight did. this is also something a lot of the things I get uh, he, he this whole like segment he did for me because I uh, basic when when I'm bored whenever I was bored in class way back when I, I uh, I had finished the assignment early or, or, or whatever, you know, I <laughs> spent my time off to learn Morse code, but yeah, well, you turn on the, you know, the it's TV like and then code. you can just, you know, you see it's a five, a zero, and you know, the whole shebang, it's all here, a two and a nine. Bobber Bucky back at it again. Easy peasy lemon squeeze me. You get out of here and then you get into this place. That's the wrong button. 
Look at that professional little garage area. Well, whatever might be behind this door, it better be something important. Let's see what order was zero zero five two nine. Yeah. And here, here we go. <laughs> it's all a bathroom, very secure bathroom, but we we take it pers we take it we take it seriously in here. Got a key. And here, check this out. Remember, I talked about voice lights climbing the skeleton. Yeah, just like Mama used to make. But a beam, but a bang. That that was supposed to be on the climbing bones part. I just said something. Apparently, my mother climb skeletons so basically you get a little bit of 3d effect I don't think it works uh, yeah, 3d wise mom. Mom. It still gets me it's been like what half an hour this is usually takes about an hour to complete for a new guy but I, I've been lucky I've played it a lot you know Polaroid let's go yeah. <laughs> this was the whole sort of mythos behind Ted. For all of we were supposed to wrote, write these like scary stories for each other and uh, we also photoshopped each other to that story and he photoshopped me to look like this with the caption no one will find your corpse Ted. I've never noticed how big that Polaroid is. It's it is just a retextured like note to be fair, but still. Also notice as I, I guess I'll, <laughs> I'll take it a bit. Da -da -da. I'll take it a bit. Okay. So as you can see here, light. I told you to trust the light no more. No more, guys. Do not trust the light at this point. Oh man. Uh, opposite of the light. Let's go. Let's slide. I'm there. I'm not programmed to crouch. We've Come never on. gotten a good Just look at you, man. Out. Well, in the beginning, I guess, but that was also something I, 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 you know, like most things, I improvise. Oh, you can hear him run. Oh, I've never noticed that before. So this is where you arrive if you try to follow the light. But uh, this sort of idea uh, that I really like as well, the idea we sort of had was, you know, you should trust the light, right? You should follow the light. The light will guide you. But then as you walk in this light corridor, right before the chase scene, you walk in this light corridor and all of a sudden, Noel takes the light away from you and you're in, in the dark. And from that point forward, he is in control of the light. The light is no longer your friend. It can deceive you. And that is a great example of that. It sort of, he, he started to take away your control a little bit. Oh, yes, no more tunnels. Yes! Also a very annoying thing to record just because I couldn't actually scream because again ear rape. So I was just trying to make it sound like I screamed and it's not very convincing. Uh, it, it's alright. Hello! This is your grandma Fingal do. I was wondering, do you by any chance know how to get epic victory royale? No? Okay. That was your girlfriend who recorded that part. My girlfriend didn't get the cameo in this one. She does have one in the next game, so that's pretty sweet, though. All right. This is the trippy part. Oh, I don't like this. There is something about this room that feels familiar. I get that's another Easter, because this is, this is this room. You can see the record player and the skull over there the skull is wearing the the hat that sort of inspired the hat that my character is wearing this is this room i used to have an easel in here it's now in our summer place but if, if i can just turn the web cable it's the chair over there it's an electric guitar and an acoustic also over there but we won't add the acoustic it's my Cajon, which is a sort of like a drum you sit on. We have my my freaking kazoo 
uh, my trash can, my Nerf guns, my VR headset. This is almost identical to my computer. That's the USB microphone I used to, th that I record all of this on. That's you, from my perspective. That's also an Easter egg from our Minecraft days. Uh, I spilled a glass of water, Jordan, in the Minecraft server we used to play in. Uh, got the whole chat to sort of to to uh, follow our new hashtag, which was pray for Noah's glass of water. So we just added a, gla a glass. Oh, th this is crazy! I almost forgot that this is this room. Me and Jordan, we added more custom furniture in this room than in any other room of the whole game. I mean, I I had almost never used Blender before. Until this day. Jordan, he did the share in Blender and he did this old light board, which is covered in, hold up, covered with a bunch of paintings and stuff right now. Uh, but anyway, and I, I made this little, this Oculus sensor. Let's take it back here. And I made, I made this easel. And uh, what else? I made the microphone. Uh, that probably my favorite one. I think I nailed the microphone. I also did the camera. I, I, oh, and my desk. It was it, it was crazy. We were going to add that you could higher and lower my desk like you can in real life. I even added so that the legs were sort of separate and could be animated and extend. We didn't do it. I think it's just because it would take a lot of time and not really add to the game. But it is, it is crazy. This is almost an exact copy of my room i don't have a plate for a lamp lamp <laughs> or a wok whatever that is but overall really similar and it's disturbing this is an exact copy of my freaking radiator and this i i have a vinyl collection vinyl records and we took three of the records and made uh, parodies <laughs> of them uh, i'm just gonna let you enjoy it we start with Bab Entrance, uh, which of course is based on ABBA and uh, their arrival. Instead of a helicopter, it's a submarine. And the song is based on uh, Money, Money, Money. Enjoy. So much fun to make. I I I, I uh, got to Jordan like three weekends in a row. I was working uh, during the summer, and we just recorded this one song every weekend. Yeah, I, I'm not sure. It's really nonsense, the songs. We took money, money, money. I wrote, yeah, I wrote the lyrics to all of them, except for a little part in in, in the Queen one. But basically what I, I mean, we, we took some famous bands that I had in my collection and some different genres. This one is borderline just a cover. You can almost not tell when me when I'm the one singing. That's me. And this is Jordan. You can almost not tell. What? So this is of course Metallica. Their uh, black label uh, record. You can't see it. Instead of a snake, I made a little gecko in the corner. Uh, I drew the, the, the Metallica one uh, and I drew the Pinky Braxy. This is uh, an animated show we're currently working on. 
so I drew those two and then we helped each other on these two. And as you can notice, yes, they all have the same face. So that was, la uh, duh, what's it called? Uh, Sad But True by Metallica. And of course, we'll, uh, last word is Queen or King with a Q. And it's Cardiac Arrest or Sheer Heart Attack is the real, <laughs> real album. And we made a cover of Killer Queen. This was the first one we made. Well, technically it's this one, but out of the covers, this is the first one. This is the Jordan New Pro part. <laughs> we just loved it so much. We just improvising for the fun of it as we added like the backing uh, vocals. And I don't know. We were just vibing to the music and he did all the little, you got a hip and a hop. And <laughs> You know what? We must record that and add it. Let's go. So yeah, this is our uh, opening theme for the animated show we're working on. Uh, yeah, let's just let's just get it. Come on, there we go. <laughs> It's sort of an anime parody. We're currently writing the script still. Uh, it's, a, it's a bop. Like, let's be honest, it's a freaking bop. Anyways, what just. I could do some real Anyways, what you're supposed to do is put the, uh, pull up this nerf. Very powerful nerf. You don't even need to reload the sucker. Booyah. It's never quite clear why you lose your nerf after shooting the glass. Uh, oh, right. How could I? I? I also made these these two. I made me and Jordan as pop. Tiny little like Funko Pop. Or Funko Bop as I call them here. This little guy puts no in Nordy Boys. Yeah, Nordy Boys. Is, it's my no, and then he's Jordan. He's called Jordy, so it's or Nordy with some merch. It looks like he would make a gnarly impression of the, both the protagonist and antagonist in this story. It's a little me. <laughs> he's so cute. And then I, I, I also made uh, Jordan. You know, they're not perfect, but again, keep in mind that I had never worked in Blender with like 3d models at all before this game oh uh yeah if there's someone ever making a game about this shit this little jazzy fellow would probably do a great job developing it you go up to my drops and when you nail it a secret door open the best part is that i have this like weird line it's really i think between two like it's from when they painted the walls or, or something. We have this like weird, it almost looks like a crack in the wall that goes perfectly almost like in the game. And every time Jordan shows up here, he seems that little like crack in the wall, this little line. Uh, and he always gets a little uneasy about it. It's <laughs> I find it amusing. I should be impressed or terrified. Well, both, yeah. <gasps> this is the funny. Oh, yeah. Go in here. There's a little camera. This is like. So, this was supposed to be like one of the studios. We have a studio and a prop room. This was uh, for because, you know, Noel, even though he's a bad guy, he's an artsy guy. He takes pride in his. <laughs> Very disturbing work. Aka okay, corpses. Let's go. Hello. 
monster and went out there? Oh my god, yeah, hi. Or I got the spider and it was This was scripted, so obviously. One of the few parts that wasn't improvised, I guess. Sorry, it's the wrong key. So this is a really cool part. This is a really cool part of the game because this is an idea we we had that, you know, we we, we want this multiple choice thing. I'm not quite sure why we, we, we got the idea. Uh, I had been playing a lot of Life is Strange that might have had to do with it, but uh, we just decided, you know what, it would be really fun if you found another victim somewhere and, and you try to talk to him. And then we got this idea of this elderly guy who's been trapped in there, you know, he's starving. Or what elderly is like middle aged maybe, but and you're trying to help him out. And there are, well, obviously there are nine. Yeah, there's nine different endings you can get, but there's three scenarios you can end up with. Uh, and we were sitting on my boat one summer. We took my boat out for a spin. We were going around the whole lake. We stopped in like the middle of the lake. Uh, and then Jordan whipped out his phone and I told him uh, because I, 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 we have sort of decided we're going to get in the middle of the lake and just come up with all the different scenarios and we wouldn't leave the lake until we had something we were happy with. So first we decided what the options would be, obviously. And then what the sort of responses and answers or whatever would be and then what it would lead to. And we had decided that one one of the options out of these nine one leads to one ending five three or one i i i i'll see if i can remember the best ending yeah maybe i'm not really sure how i can help you we just gotta do our best and then all we can do is hope that's enough yeah maybe that's true Check the integrity of the walls. This is the Maybe there's best, a weak spot we the can best ending. You know. That's actually a great idea. Oh, there's a weak spot in the bricks. So best and best, he dies in all of them. I'll just, I'll just spoil the fun for you. In all nine endings, he's going to die. But this is the only one where he actually sort of accepts his fate. You know, where he goes, you know, like, ah, uh, well, you tried your best, but it, it's too late for me. You go save yourself, go without me, you got this. You can do this. You just don't let me drag you down. my proudest screen not my proudest but in three of the the endings he dies of a panic attack where you can just hear like the heart beating faster and faster until he is it just stops and in five of the endings he kills himself he, he, he gets so like angry and frustrated that he's stuck there that he just starts bashing his head towards the wall. It's not always quite clear what's going on because it's only auditorial uh, and <laughs> almost over the top gory. This is also something he, Jordan just oh, great. added just to mess Mannequins. with me. Well, really, it's I... I <laughs> 
I have a I have a very big phobia for both dolls and mannequins. I've played through this part. I mean, now it's sort of predicted. They're still really disturbing. This is the prop room, by the way. Okay. I. It's like the hair is standing on my back. This is. When I was a kid, th there was this video on YouTube. Oh, I feel fantastic. This like animatronic. This like animatronic mannequin that was dancing around. And I was so disturbed by that video. I think that's sort of where my fear spawned. It was my idea that she was slowly going to slow uh, slide forward. You could both see her shadow then. And when the light stops, she's right in front of you. And of course, they've turned around. Okay, something's off. Yeah, this was just to mess with me because he told me like, we're going to have to add a bunch of mannequins to some part of the game. You do realize that. And I just, you know, I, I, you know yeah, I, I know. That does always give you a bit of a kick. And the cool part is, let's let's go back and check. This is attention to detail at its finest. For all of those brave and stupid enough to <laughs> return back here. Check this crap out. Glass broken. Or well, gone. That's my cue to leave though. I don't want to stay here. I'd rather just leave. I want to go home, man. I just want some of those, those barbecue Doritos. Uh, a glass, a glass of milk, dipped in some habanero hot sauce. <laughs> I don't know where I'm getting with any of this. It's this weird feeling, you know, I know everything that's gonna happen, but I feel like I don't. This is gonna be fun. Also, we, uh, in, if you watch, check out the early gameplays, we had a lot of problems with this part. The live action. <laughs> hey, I'm an artist, and this, and this is my work. I really hope you'll enjoy it, because I've spent so much time and energy developing. This is a bit strange watching yourself like this. That I, that I really want to express. I, I like to work with my hands to feel the material I'm working with. It. And they do. And they do. For what they did. For what he did. I miss my father so very much. Because he made me the artist I am today. It's all because of him. Everything is. You can't tell if I'm laughing or crying, and that was sort of the idea of that. I have my painting right here, hold on. I never like color. It doesn't feel like home to me. I like working with shadows. In the shadows. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, hot. Damn, boy. <laughs> Let's take a closer look, shall we? You got this beautiful. Me and Shur, we, we, we forgot to paint this in advance. We were going to do that. So what we did, this was before, this was, was oh, I don't, nine months ago maybe, time was quite fast, uh, we, we, we took a trip to my summer place, my family's uh, summer place, and we have this potato cellar that looked an awful lot like the sort of tunnels you're in in the beginning of the game. And I'm, I'm, so what, basically what we did, uh, <laughs> was that we went down there uh we bought those sunglasses on the way to shooting that because i had lost my previous ones that looked like that i found them last week like funnily enough and i uh, and the hat you can see up there in a just red flannel shirt i cut some blue old gloves i used to have 
way back when you cut the fingers off to try to mimic as best as I could this sort of model in the game and uh, yeah we, uh, we went down this potato cellar we sh shot that thing I had written the little a little dialogue on my phone I read it between takes uh, but, but the painting that <laughs> we uh, w were gonna paint something in advance that uh, he could show up is this disturbing painting of like tortured bodies and disturbed faces and darkness and bizarre colors and stuff uh, but again we had forgotten about it uh, so we quickly had to go to this other house we have nearby um, which is more private me and my family and the other one is more you know the whole sort of family trees house place whatever because that's where I had all my that's where I had my easel and my paints and stuff so we just quickly had to like freeze that we took like a, a pencil we quickly just drew uh, some like stick figures and then we painted all the like poses and stuff and then we took one of these you know like charcoal pens and just went crazy uh, and then we went back to shoot the latter part uh, we also shot a little teaser that you can find on YouTube in the, the Nordy production Nordy productions YouTube channel uh, It was so fun so much fun and we had we, we brought some snacks and drinks and stuff where there's it was just jolly good time Please, you gotta get me out of here. Please, anyone, help, help. I'll try for that. Jazz? That's right. David Jazz at your service. Oh, thank God. You need to help me out of here. I will certainly try, Trevor. But this door seems incredibly secure. If you only had some explosives or something. Well, there's plenty of chemicals and stuff in here. Maybe I could do something with those. Brilliant! Maybe you have what is required to make some plastic too. You're gonna need this, this, and also these two. But hurry, before no one catches up to you. <sighs> okay. Uh, I wrote that part too. I don't know why I was responsible for the whole blasting dough thing. Yeah, we got the flint of steel. We got a mini f of bank vault with the bone in it. Just run along the edges and you're gonna find everything you need. Because there's nothing in the middle. Bada beam, bada bam! I don't know why I'm saying that so much today. Pitbull has changed me. Bobber Bucky, come on! Sorry, I'll come back for you, my friend. I'll come back for you. Sexy bastard. It looks so disgusting, doesn't it? Like, it, that, it's not far off, I guess, from the real thing, necessarily, but it, it does not look appetizing. I don't think it's supposed to, to be fair. Ignite it with the flint. You have the ropes instantly. David Jazz, face reveal. Let's go. His hair is so crazy. I originally we made, made an actual afro with individual rich, hair straps, but, yes, but the game could not. Traveler. So how do we stop this son of a bitch? Look out! <laughs> <laughs> that was the first idea we had was when you escape he will shoot you with an RPG. That was the only thing we had to go go with before we even wrote anything else and we stuck with it. Margarita. You're all safe. You're all safe. <laughs> now, child. Oh, this is so disturbing. And it's also a company's colors, or, or yeah. I'll explain the ending in a bit because a lot of people seem confused with it, and rightfully so. But Papa, I really like. Do you. not talk back to me, boy. There's no loving you, boy, is kind. What do you mean? They are seducing you, polluting your brain. You don't love them. They just want you to think that, but they can never love you. Promise me, boy. Any one of them fags ever make you feel for them, that you punish them, because that is what they deserve. 
they deserve to be punished. Do you understand, boy? Do you understand? Yes, father. I understand. I promise. It is very fun to see your own name uh, show up so many times. Uh, yeah, I don't know why David Jass and Old Victim are before the main character and the main antagonist, but based on a true made up story, that was on me. I, I, I said we need to end our games with based on a true made up story because it's true, we make up a story and we base games on them. Yeah, there you have it. Nordic Productions. So yeah, about the ending. I'll mute this bastard now. We don't need you. Am I big now? I should be big. Getting to the ending now, shall we? Okay, here's, here's the story, you old chums. So yeah, basically the whole him standing there with an RPG. Originally, he was going to stand on this sort of driveway or in front of his little shed or house. Uh, and originally, you were going to look for all those things in the whole house. But it was time consuming and unnecessary, really. So we changed it to a little like storage area. Uh, but it turned out that the motorcycle uh, was driving too fast. And if so, he would have been so small that you wouldn't really be able to realize what was happening so he just magically teleports to right behind you so well basic okay uh the ending basically our story that we used to tell uh, our our friends was that swedes were aliens we come from this big space ball space meatball called margareta and when we pass we actually just travel back home and i guess N noel in this game somehow with his delusions and stuff, taffed into something and figured that out. This is not canon. Uh, th this is my own head canon. It is head canon from for, from one of the, the the writers. So I guess it might might be canon. That's up to you. But he tapped into something. He realized, okay, well, Mar God looks like a meatball. We can't comprehend God, so God is a meatball. And when you've struggled, and when he gets to you, you yourself uh, get to realize that God is a meatball. I get this is a game based on a bunch of inside jokes put in a horror environment, so don't explain, uh, don't expect too much sense. And now for the endings where it turns, you get to explore a little, you get a little, a little nibble, a little taste of of Noel, the the bad guy, the antagonist of his past. Well, that's basically, you know. He he was attracted to men, here, uh, but his dad was sort of against that. So he started brainwashing him to believing that, you know, other other homosexuals try, tried to, to seduce him, to, to take him away from his dad and, and his family and his actual loved ones. This was, you know, his dad's not perhaps well delusions i guess but i think it was more a way of him manipulating trying to scare him straight i guess you could say uh and that just uh, after his dad's abuse and stuff you know the dad passed away and now he's all alone unable to to sort of control his feelings so he develops this hatred for everyone he finds attractive if he sees a man somewhere he finds attractive he ends up like you know torturing them but you know he he wants to be with them but his dad is still sort of in his head manipulating him trying to make the guys he's attracted to sort of villainized so he sees them as bad guys but he still sort of he wants to get to know them and cares for them and it just turns all twisted in his head, already like broken mind so it just makes them sort of forced to stay in this evil chamber. David Jazz refers to it as a sex chamber. That might just be speculation. It's never clear what he does to them in the chamber. Th that depends how dark you want to make the story. Originally, then I was playing both the son and the father. But it sounded 
really strange because I did it all in one take. So I was there like, but Pap, I really like him. Do not talk back to me. I didn't do that voice, but it, it, you could hear it because, uh, you know, I ha when I sometimes it wasn't a smooth transition between voice. It could be, but Pap, I really like him. Do not, you know, like I str sometimes struggle to skip between. Uh, but that was the way I decided to do things, I guess, because I didn't have a, an editing program at the time. This is just weird, bro. It didn't sound good. It wasn't, it was an idea. It didn't work. That's c'est la vie, you know? It still feels strange to be back. Uh, I feel like if I'm ever doing a comeback, I might as well, you know, do some more explanation behind the two, two games that we have out right now, because... I think this old behind the scenes view in a way can be quite interesting. It's going to be a long one. And I thank you for sticking around. Uh, even if you did that little 10 second skip thing whenever things got lame. I get that. I do that all the time, man. It's cool. It's all right. Uh, and hey, man, Toast, if, if you're watching this, uh, what's the beef, dude? <laughs> I'm kidding. Anyways, that's that's enough for, for this video, I guess. I hope you enjoyed it. Yeah, I was 14, now I'm 20. I'm back, baby, and I'm sexier than ever. I think it's noticeable I haven't done this in a while. I, I don't really know. I'm sitting here, you know, like... Like a kid. Holding someone's cat for the first time. I don't know what to do with it. I'm like, okay. There's a cat. That's how I feel about this video. It's like, okay. <laughs> I'm recording. Now what should I do? Uh, but really, no, I, I, I hope you guys, if you haven't played it already, you know, link is in the description. I'm just, I'm just saying. You know, keep an eye out. Subscribe, like, leave a comment in the comments below, or all three. I still know my outro. Uh, and because soon the shopping list will be right up here, dudes and dudettes. Okay. <laughs> See ya, I guess. Have a good one.